when we do these activities, it's very important that you understand the fundoing.com forward slash resources page. All of the things I'm going to show you and more are at this page. You'll get your handouts, you'll get free resources. All the things you need are here. Then there's, and there's more. I think there's about, there's at least a dozen, maybe, maybe 10 or a dozen activities at this page, including the ones we're going to do. And you can dive in, get all the stuff there, and then ask me questions. You know how you'll have a, a resource to get a hold of me uh, email wise. If you have any questions, please reach out. Um, but the focus again is on staying at a safe physical distance while safely connecting, right? So we're connecting with each other. So it, keep in mind, these are physically distance activities. I'm not going to talk about that every single time. Uh, this first one is called, are you more like? In the resources page, on the resources page, there's a, a handout of 40. There's a download of 40 questions that are in addition to the book that's available at the store. The book has 1,001 of these connections. And, but you can have some free ones also in the Dropbox download at the resources site, there's more. So the idea here is, yes, you could just say, hey, are you a letter grade or pass fail? And what I would do if we're safely distancing, I would just, if they're sitting in chairs, I would just have them stand up if they are, if they are more like a letter grade and stay seated if they are more like pass fail. And then the follow-up would be, okay, look around, see who's like you, see who's not like you. It's okay to be different. Now we have, we're building in differences. We're building in who are we like. Then maybe you could say the, the next level is more metaphorical. How do you, how are you more like a letter grade? When they're younger, when I use these with elementary kids, usually the ones I choose are a little more appropriate for them. And then they usually choose the ones they like. I like this, I don't like that. Or you could say, do you, which one do you like more? Uh, an espresso or frappuccino. I don't know what elementary people would do espressos too much, but you'd find questions that are related to more a grade level um, aptitude or understanding, right? Uh, so metaphorically, let's do another one. Are you more like a single movie or a three-part series? So what do you like more could be the first question. How are you like a single movie or a three-part series? Now we're getting a little deeper, getting to know people a little bit more. So in a classroom setting, you're giving some people an, uh, an opportunity to, to raise their hand and speak up and say how they think they're like more of a single movie or a three-part series. They have to think a little bit more. This creates a little more creative thinking process. So that first part is, are you more like? You could leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Then um, look around. Who's like you? Who's not like you? Difference is okay. Then anybody want to share how they think they're more like, how they believe they're more like uh, wind power or solar? And it, have them be creative and, and then start feeling safe speaking up. So this is a basic, are you more like? Some, this is not... Uh, would you rather, those are kind of crazy, mm -hmm. and this is not never have I ever, okay? So these are whole different contexts. These are meant to explore metaphorical thinking and get to a little more personal level of engagement, all right? Mm -hmm. Great for writing prompts. Are you more like this or that? Let's write it out, and then we're going to hang these on the wall. That's another way. Uh, if you're not at desks, you could physically, everybody being mindful of safe distancing, a uh, letter grade goes to one side and a pass fail goes to the other. So now they're congregating uh, in an area if you following safe distancing. Cool. All right. Uh, what we'll do from here is if you have questions about this, the activities I'm going to do, throw them in the chat and then Bryn's going to keep an eye out on the chat and if there if there are ones that we need to address 
before moving on or go, we, we could go back and look, let's do a couple and then go back. Hey, any questions, let's address and then we'll do the next one. All right, so if you have any questions about this one, uh, could put them in the chat, okay? Let's go to this activity two, Bryn. All right, oh, monitor the chat, advance the slides, no, all the you're things. the tech. You're the tech person. All right, here we go. Lateral I'm thinking ready. puzzles. This is a two-part slide, Bryn, so get ready. Uh, I'm ready. These are, a th I, I think a lot of you have probably seen these before. Some people could even call them riddles. It could be riddles, minute mysteries. Uh, there's other names for these. But the idea with this, this is how I use them. And these are great for social distancing. We could be outside and kind of spread out. We could be in our desk spread out. But the idea around this for me is about thinking about, I'm going to say the word good questions. We want to encourage people to ask questions. They are going to ask me questions that I can answer with a yes or no. And sometimes I throw in, it doesn't matter. Uh, it just, that's not relevant to, uh, to the, your data. So we're going to collect data. Now, here's the, here's the ask that I give them. Here's one of the directions. If you know the answer, if you believe you know the answer, I'm going to ask you not to blurt it out. The, the, the purpose of what we're doing is to help each other learn and grow. So if we just blurt out the answer, the answer is no, and then we're done. The learning is over. If we want to continue to help people think about things and collect data, when we're together, we're going to collect a lot of data about each other, about our academic subjects, about our teachers, about our school asking good questions or even asking a question is going to be important. So let's say you think you know the answer, right? Now, without blurting it out, now we're in an online setting, so we're going to share in the chat. Um, but mm. without blurting it out, think of a question that could be answered with a yes or no that might lead somebody to figure out the answer for themselves. Okay, it's a little tricky sometimes. Elementary kids, I usually do simple riddles. So if you search riddles uh, uh, in a search engine and find some kid-friendly riddles, you could play the same game with kid-friendly riddles. Uh, like, like what's red and white, red and black and white and red all over, things like that. So you could find those <laughs> riddles online. These are gonna be more, a little bit more for middle school and older because we are asked, thinking about and asking questions. So we're gonna try one. Bryn's going to put up the next slide. Now remember, if you know the answer, if you believe, don't put it in the chat, but put in a question that I can answer with a yes or no. All right, ready to play? Here we go. Maybe. I went too far. All right, here it is. Woman puts her two children up in a tree. They make no attempt to leave the tree. Why? Okay, now you, if you, oh, I know this one. Now think of a question that you could ask the group. Um, are they in a tree house? No. Are they in oh, a, is, is a, the woman oh, an animal? Is the what? Is the woman an animal? No, woman is not an animal. Is there a bear below them? <laughs> no, the bear is not below them. Is uh, there danger? There is no danger. Is there flooding? Flood. There is no natural disaster of flooding. Is the tree a live tree? Is it is a real tree? tree? A live tree. Ooh, um, oh. no. I could also say it used to be. Are there other people in the tree? Ooh, yes, there are other people in the tree. Now, as you, uh, as, you, knows. as you ask more questions, let me give you another caveat here. What I usually do, and I forgot to tell you this, I say, we're gonna explore answers when I say, okay, I think we've got enough data to try an answer, who would like to risk giving an answer? It might be wrong, mm. but it's okay to risk and try. You could give an answer, then I'll pick people to share an answer. 
If we guess it right away, how many of you had that right answer? How many of you had a different answer? What did you think? So now we're giving them an opportunity to share if they feel safe enough to share in front of the group. Mm -hmm. What else do we got? Are there, are these pictures of, are these pictures of real people? Yeah. Uh, is we... the tree drawn on paper? Is the tree on a document? Yes. All those yes. are getting a little bit closer. Yes. Than, uh, are they rock climbers? Are they rock climbers? Ooh, no, they're not rock climbers. They could be. Do they live in the tree? Is there house in the tree? Is there food in the tree? Oh, can the woman fly? No. <laughs> Are good. they waiting on the fire brigade? Yes, could be a mythical answer, right? Those mythical movies. All right, since we kind of get the idea, remember we are encouraging people to ask questions. <laughs> Let's take a little pause quick before I ask for answers. It's also important for you as an educator to create that safe space for asking questions. Even if in your mind, you say to yourself as an educator, oh my God, do I have to answer that again? Or if, is that a question that's unnecessary? We can't do that, right? We encourage, oh, nice. Good question. Does anybody know the answer to that? I think we might have answered something like Aww. that before. Let the students answer. Oh, no, that's not a good one. Mm -hmm. And you also have to monitor. This is our responsibility as teachers, educators, facilitators. Monitor how we engage with each other. If we say, oh, stupid, we already answered that question. This is an opportunity for us to talk about how we address one another and how we use our intonation. So now we're opening up the door to create an environment that even though, yes, I think what you just did is a stupid thing, that's my opinion. It may not be other people's opinion. So how could we change the way you just said that to encourage people to always ask questions. They might have been thinking about a, a, a problem they're having or a struggle they're having. They missed that person asking that question. They missed the answer. We all get distracted. If we have a little empathy for those people that they didn't hear or remember, then we can create that safe environment where people have an opportunity and feel willing to ask questions. Okay, so it's remember, it's not one of those let's do it and let's let this stuff go by. When we're building connections, right, the idea is to help them navigate the skills and abilities to build connections in a positive way. This is yeah, our opportunity. So, so much of these activities really aren't about the activity, right? It's, it's a medium for which to deliver social emotional learning. And in an activity like this, uh, modeling is so important. And what the students are watching is how you address them and how you guide them to address each other. And so um, I love it. And, and this, this is an example of what I also call a, a doorway. The, when you go to the resources page and you find these lateral puzzles that I've collected, I believe most of them, I can't remember if these are the starred ones now or if these are a good collection, these will also lead to an additional conversation. We could now, after we do this lateral thinking puzzle, we could talk about people's family tree. What about having an exercise? Create a little family tree of as many people as you know. Who knows how to make a family tree? What does a family tree look like? Does it have to look like a tree? Does it is a tree that we see out in nature the same as a family tree? You know, how do we explain those things? So now it gives us another opportunity to go even further and find out about people's families and connect even deeper. Again, it can be just a fun play and then move on. And this mm -hmm. also can be a more of a deeper connection exercise. Okay. So far, so good. How, let's go back to, are yeah. there any questions, Bryn, that you noted about the last two activities? Um, most of the questions were just, uh, 
really like playing the game, not not so much about the facilitation technique or theory. Cool. So before we move on, I think people are going to want an answer. If they didn't catch the answer, people, the, the answer is the, the woman was putting her children into a family tree in a document of sorts, in a book or on some paper. Okay, if you, if you missed out on that answer, again, we, they might have left the room, they might have had the audio, we don't know, but the answer is, it's a family mm -hmm. tree. Nice. Okay, we're going to move on. Next one. This is one of my, my recent favorites. Uh, mm -hmm. from this one. I'm going to share my screen. Bryn is already giving me the opportunity to share yeah. my screen. She's good. That's what a tech person does. Uh, <laughs> as far as I know, you can only see the page that says, what's the quote? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Everything else behind it is black. Yes. Correct. Yeah, this is the, uh, something I learned uh, that you can just share a document and not your screen. That way you don't see anything else. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, this is in the resources page. This will give you the link to all the things that you can download and use. In, uh, and what they are is, ooh, I have to hover over. They are icons. I have in the, when you, when you go to the source for the download for these icons, you'll get to where I got these icons. I think it's called the Noun Project. The Noun Project. I think it was like $19.99 a year for license to all these icons. If you were in my word circle puzzle, virtual word circle puzzle workshop, we did some of these icon circle puzzles in the workshop. But for what's the quote card, you could do this by projecting cards onto a screen if you have uh, the technology to do that. You could copy these and cut these out, put them on a table, and people could randomly go up during an activity, pick one of these or two of these off the table. Uh, if we've safely taken care of all the equipment in the, and the paper, uh, they have their own pencils, that sort of a thing. And the idea with this, if I'm projecting this virtually on a screen for people to see, I can say to my, my students, um, we're going to have two minutes. You can do as many of these as you can in two minutes if you'd like, or just choose one. But the idea is to pick one of these images and think about a quote you would add to the, one of these images that you would, might send to someone that you know. You could send it to a best friend. You could send it to a relative. You could send it to anybody in your community that you might want to give them an uplifting uh, message or let them know that you're thinking about them. So think about someone else as you look at these pictures and then write a quote to the picture and then who would you send it to? Now, could you physically send these? I don't know yet. I'm handing things off to people, not so much. Could, if you had access, if your students had access to a phone, could they take a picture of their uh, image card and their quote um, and send it to someone? Could they text someone the message? There could be ways that you could get these messages out to people if you do it safely in your context. But let's play. Let's do... Um, one of these images for yourself. Think about someone you would send it to. You don't have to tell us who that person is, but think about a quote and what would the quote say? Write in the chat, I have a quote for number three, here's my quote. And then just in your mind, who would you send it to? And again, you can copy these off, there's a PDF download, there's full instructions, in the resource at the resources page so i want to open up my chat and make sure i get to see um who's playing and again you don't have to play you can just think uh, quote number one whatever the challenge we have your back 
wonderful. Oh. I think it's so important for kids, especially right now, to feel seen and heard. Um, you know, so much that's going on in the world, I feel like youth are sort of the collateral damage and uh, they don't have as loud of a voice. So that's so important. And what, what I like about what I find when you go to the blog post for this, you can scroll down and see some of the amazing examples that I've collected and mm -hmm. took pictures of. If you have some of those examples, send them to me. I'll put them up there so we can have this scrolling kind of archive. But to me, what I found most powerful is if we're thinking about someone else, mm. it's, it seems easier for people to write a quote if we're thinking about sending it to somebody else or we're thinking mm. about taking care of someone else. That's what I've found mm -hmm. to be the most powerful use of this. Could you give everyone a set of their quote, of these quote cards, quote images, and they could kind of journal. They could maybe keep a, a record and, and cut things out. And at, I don't know, what, you know, how can we be creative and give each other these messages? Could there be, around our room could there be uh names mm. our names around the room and then we tape we put some tape on the back of these and we put them under their name i don't know would that work could everybody get the same amount could the teacher add some you know is how's it going to look if somebody gets more than others do we talk about that how do we see other people need some encouragement this is that book together where, where he talks about we also have to look around. We may not be doing anything mean to someone, but we may not be helping either. Is there a way mm. to help a little bit, to give a smile in the hallway, to at least say hello to someone, to go to invite somebody to come and sit with them if they're by themselves? This is a way we create those connections. Cool. Let's do, here's, a, here's another one. Let's do real quick. Maybe there's some inspiration there. In your download, there's no numbers on these, so um, I think I'll I'll go, I'll make sure I go put this one uh, at the at the um, blog site, so that you get this one too. Because if you do want to project these, mm -hmm. you'll have those. Because I think I just have the downloadable cut and handout kind of. Uh, PDF is available, but I'll put those on later. Uh, be a good listener. Would love to know your thoughts. Oh, I like that one. Uh, think outside the box. I forgot my face mask. I like that one. <laughs> Very cool. See, now, doesn't that open up a conversation about face masks? You know, we people have opinions about face masks and where do they get them from? Where do they get their beliefs from? How do they come to these decisions? All of this, these quotes can lead to now deeper conversations. Everything mm -hmm. we've done so far can be done very superficially. Let's have a little fun. Let's make this a fun thing and then move on. You don't always have to process everything mm -hmm. and you can take them further if you have time. Again, all three so far, we can do these over and over again. We can come up with new mm -hmm. things. Could you have, have your students draw some icons and contribute them to the class uh, and then have a little contest about uh, write a quote to as many of the, uh, the students who drew icons? What do they mean to you and how are you connected to them? So a lot of different ways you can do this. Cool. You are safe. I love that one. Safe environment to grow. Very cool. Yeah. All right, my um, friends, are you ready? Uh, is there, are there any questions about, before we move on, throw yeah. any questions in here real quick about what's the quote cards? Mm -hmm. Again, in the resources page, there's a whole, I wrote a whole blog post about it and information on how you get these icons. I'll add this quote page with the numbers mm -hmm. on if you want to use them mm -hmm. to project digitally. That'll be up sometime today. 
And don't feel like you have to scramble to write notes or take screenshots. I mean, you're certainly welcome to do that, but I promise um, if you registered for the event, we have your email and we'll set out a follow up that includes links and resources and, and all the things. So I want you to just be here, be present um, and enjoy uh, this time that we have together. So. All right. Act. I don't see right. any questions. I don't see Activity. any. Number four. Now, some of you might have been. So, well, you got to give me my sharing back. Oh, I have. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, when I'm not the tech person. Cool, cool, cool. Now, remember, if you have questions, throw them in the chat. We're going to do a Q and A at the end, and we'll try to keep an eye on questions and come back to them. Yeah. Then you're gonna have to give me sharing back. I think that was the transition. Remember, we forgot about that. I was gonna say. Oh yeah, we were, we were playing with that a little bit. All right, so activity four, you're on. For this activity, if you were in my Zooming in workshop uh, with, with Solomon Masala, you will have seen this. This is again at the resources page all the downloadables that you need. But let's go ahead and play. So uh, Bryn, you're gonna give me back mm -hmm. control so I can share. Man. <laughs> I know. I I Stop sharing. Cool. You go. My turn. It's all about the power, right? All right, <laughs> nice. Now with this, doing this uh, safe distancing in person, you're everyone's going to have one of these number cards or number sheets, right? When you go to the resources package, you're, there's more to the resources package. There's even a grid where they can graph their progress. The idea here is everybody is working independently. So they will be searching for numbers in sequence, starting with number one. So number one is at the top left corner. You always start with number one. In this virtual setting, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be physically hovering your index finger, one index finger, over the number that you're on. So I'll go to one, and then I gotta find two, and I'm gonna move around and hover over the numbers on the document. You're gonna have 60 seconds to get as far as you can. Right? I promise you all the numbers are there, one to 60. If you happen to be really good at this or you've practiced before because you've done this and you get to 60 and the minute is not over, just go back to one and continue with uh, one through as many as you can get to and add those numbers to your 60 at the end. When the numbers are covered up again, when we come back to this sheet, I want you to write down that first number that you got. So remember when, when this scrolls over, I'm gonna say five, four, three, two, one, remember this number, and then I'm gonna cover the numbers, okay? So you have 60 seconds to get as far as you can, starting with number one, only using one index finger, that's all you get, all right? I'm gonna set my timer. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how I use this in an educational setting. But usually this first time, I just kind of throw it out there. And I want them, I don't want them to think about it too much. I just want them to try it and get some experience. If we do goal setting right away, we might not know or have any experience to do accurate goal setting. So let's just get an experience going. All right, on your mark, here we go. Get set. Go. All right. Hopefully you can see the entire, you might have to move a status bar around. I'm hoping you can see all the numbers. It's depending on your screen that you're using. And I know talking is probably driving some of you absolutely nuts, but that could be a distraction and could be done on purpose. So I'll stop. Uh -oh. I'm stuck. 30 seconds. Ah! Twenty seconds. Ah! Ten. 
10 seconds. I'm getting more anxious when you say that. Five seconds. <laughs> All right, what number are you on right now? Remember that number? Hopefully you remember that number. Write that number down. All right, it's gonna be very important right now that you take a breath. Breathe, breathe, breathe. It's all okay. This is just another experience we're having together, right? Now, in a face-to-face -face setting, I will ask for volunteers, if you wanna share your number, you can, but you don't have to share any numbers with anybody. This is completely up to you. But if you wanna share your number, you can. And then people can share their numbers. And then we can start talking about, well, now you know other people's numbers what did that just do to you? What did you start thinking? Did you start thinking you're better? Did you start thinking you're worse? And why am I so bad at this? And why is my number so low? If you have a high number, you don't know if it's high yet. But So now we start getting self-talk that comes into this activity. And one of the biggest things I worked on with at-risk youth in this activity was talking about how we talk in our heads. Self-talk, what are we saying? Are we sabotaging our efforts? Are we quitting too early? Are we saying everybody's better than me? Are we saying, well, I'm better than everybody else? How do we manage that to be able to be successful? Then I might ask real quick, hey, does anybody have any strategies that they wanna share with the group? And if you have a strategy, those of you who played this before, you know how this plays out. So don't share just yet the super secret strategy. But if you've never played and you've discovered something, a strategy you might want to share with someone else, you could write it in the, in the chat. If you want to find out some strategies that people are using, go read the chat. If you don't want to find out, then if you're face to face, you could plug your ears. You know, if you wanna do it on your own, you have that autonomy, mm -hmm. you don't need any help from anybody else, then we talk about that, talk about helping. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you have your first number. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have, anybody want, anybody, there's a little bit of advice in the chat. Cool, 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 all right. We're gonna to go to round two. Now, I usually tell mm. people we're going to play this seven times or 10 times or 15 times. My record is 15 times, and there is a purpose behind this. But uh, the, I think the graph has seven times. Seven's pretty good to get the mm. idea of the lesson, right? But we're going to mm -hmm. go into round two, same activity. You start with number one, and you go as far as you can for 60 seconds. Okay, nice deep breath. Remember, breathing is good for the brain. Helps us to think and focus. On your mark, get set, go. All right. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Oh no. I promise all the numbers are there. There it is. Ten seconds. Ah. Five seconds. Stop. Remember that number? Okay. And from here, we just keep asking questions. Okay, so how did you do? There are three relationships to goals. You can meet your goal, you can exceed mm -hmm. your goal, you can fall short of your goal. What do you say to yourself when you, when you encounter any of those three aspects of reaching goals? 
Did you set your goal too high? Do you want to set your, do you set your goal too low and your expectations mm -hmm. that change? If you get a high number, why did you get a high number? Did you take someone else's advice? Did you find a strategy? Do you have a strategy that you want to share with anybody? Anybody want to hear a strategy? Uh, anybody using something that's very helpful? We only have one index finger. What if we got to use two? Would that be helpful? Mm -hmm. So now we talk about how we get better. Oftentimes in this activity, numbers go down because of stress. And now we have to figure out how to counter stress. Self-talk, there's breathing, there's all these kinds of relaxation techniques we can help them out with. The idea is to see how we do with practice, right? If we get help mm -hmm. from someone. Now, after round four, if this strategy has not shown up, I will pipe in and say, as a teacher, as a team builder, I may end up pointing you in a direction. You can use the advice if you want. You can stay with your own strategy. But if you, when you encounter your numbers next time, know that the odd numbers are on the left and the even numbers are on the right. So now we have a huh. word. I might give you some information that might help you. It might not. For some people, I've seen it doesn't, it doesn't help them. They had their own strategy and they cannot get out of their strategy. Mm -hmm. So that advice didn't work. So it doesn't work for everybody. But then oftentimes I see an exponential change when they have some of that information. So there's mm -hmm. more about th this activity in the write-up. If you have any more questions, uh, ask me in the post that you're going to get to there are two i think there are two videos of a session that i did on this activity and we talk about this a lot so you can do more videos with this